Hi, I'm Kay. The recent Bohemian Rhapsody movie tells the success story of Freddie Mercury, but there isn't much about his early days, so let's fix that. Now, Freddie Mercury didn't start out as Freddie Mercury. He was born as Farouk Pulsara in the British territory of Zanzibar, nowadays Tanzania. His family were Persian and practiced the ancient Zoroastrian religion. At the age of 8, his parents decided to send him to an Indian boarding school near Mumbai. He was good in sports and at the age of 10 he became a school champion in table tennis. He received other trophies, including one for boxing. Young Freddy also had a talent in art and sketched for friends and relatives. At the age of 12 he got the school trophy as junior all-rounder. However, it's Freddy's musical talent that caught the principal's eye. He suggested that Freddy's parents pay a little extra for his music studies and Freddy started learning the piano. He also became a member of the school choir and participated in theater. Studying hard, he achieved grade 4 in both practical and theory. In 1958, Freddy formed a rock and roll band called The Hectics with his schoolmates. And he was... the piano guy. They played at school parties and celebrations, but school time wasn't all sunny days for him. He would later say that the schoolmaster chased him, that he was considered the arch poof, and that in general he got his share of the schoolboy pranks. I'm just a poor boy, I need no sympathy. In 1962, Freddy lost interest in his studies, failed his 10th year exams, and returned to Zanzibar. Two years later, the family migrated to Britain due to political unrest in Zanzibar. Freddy is 17 now and wants to get into an art college. For that, he needs at least one A-level, so he enrolls in the nearby Isleworth Polytechnic, where he gets his art A-level in the spring of 1966. He successfully joins Ealing College of Art and in September starts a graphic illustrating course there. The next year, Jimi Hendrix explodes onto the scene and Freddy becomes a big fan. He spends time drawing his hero and even once watches Hendrix play nine nights in a row. Freddy becomes good friends with a fellow student, Tim Staffel, a bass player. Tim takes Freddy to the rehearsals of his band Smile, with Brian May on the guitar and Roger Taylor on drums. Freddy gets on well with Brian and Roger and admires Brian's playing. Inspired by Smile, he begins to experiment with music for the first time since leaving India. Freddy graduates from Ealing College in June 1969 moves to Roger Taylor's flat and that summer they open a stall. The guys sell artwork made by Freddy and fellow Ealing students and later close. That summer Freddy gets introduced to the band Ibex. Such is his enthusiasm that just 10 days later he's learned the band's set, brings in a few new songs and travels to Bolton to play a gig with them, which was his debut performance. He wants to rename the band into Wreckage, but nobody digs the idea. Then, one night, he phones each of the guys and tells them the same thing. The others don't mind, how do you feel? This trick works and the name gets changed, but wreckage falls apart by the end of the year. Freddy sees a vocalist wanted advertisement, auditions for it, and in late 1969 becomes the lead singer for Sour Milk Sea. They do a few rehearsals and then a few gigs in Oxford, but after just two months, the owner of most of the equipment decides to take it back and the band breaks up. This is the moment. In April 1970, Smile's vocalist leaves the band and Freddie joins them as lead singer. We are the champions, my friend. He changes their name to Queen, changes his last name to Mercury. And so the history begins. If you haven't watched the movie, give it a shot. It seems to be doing well ratings-wise, and we discussed it recently in our new The Names show. Check it out. Perhaps you're a hardcore Queen fan and know some interesting facts about Freddy that we missed. If so, leave them down below and don't forget to subscribe. Have a nice one and I'll see you later.